All right, it's about eight o'clock, so we'll go ahead and start. What's up, Facebook? How's everybody doing? Ready to jump in it again? I'm really excited about this episode. Way more excited than a man has the right to be about candy bars. But, uh, you know, I'm just going to let you in on a little thing about me. I love... I don't just love candy. I love unique candies, you know? And one of the things that I have for, I'd say, 30 years now been saying is that there has not been any new candy in forever. And what I mean by that is that, you know, pick a candy, caramel, right? One day caramel did not exist, and then it existed. Chocolate. There was a time when chocolate as a candy did not exist, and then it did. But everything since, you know, like, say 1915 has just been a rehash of different candies. Like, oh, we'll add, a, we'll add uh, almonds to this one. We'll add... Uh, you know, pecans to this one. We'll, we'll make this one with peanut butter. And, uh, you know, I would love to have some new candy, but as long as I've been looking, I can't find it. And I've told my mom this story five or six times, and every time she says, well, have you ever heard of Divinity? But, yes, I have. As a matter of fact, went to Bucky's today. I got a Divinity right here. So, but again, that's an old, old candy Nothing new under the sun. So we'll just dig in here. Uh, as I have been previewing this week, uh, this came about because I said on my Facebook recently that I took the very bold position that Fifth Avenue is a far superior candy bar than uh, Butterfinger. And um, what's ironic about this is that I just was looking on my Facebook history today and found a video a post from a couple of years ago where I said that the Butterfinger Butterfinger cups are superior to the Reese's peanut butter cups. And boy, that set off a firestorm. I rem I forgot that it was like 40 or 50 comments of people just like telling me how evil and wrong I was that the sandy gritty peanut butter that 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 they put in Reese's. And and look at let me let, let's get this right. I love Reese's but I just preferred the smooth peanut butter in the peanut butter cups uh, from Butterfinger. Those don't exist anymore. So uh, now we're going to put Butterfinger up against Fifth Avenue and some of the other challengers. I just think we're just going to jump right into it uh, and, and start in on this. So uh, I'm doing this in a very particular order that I have worked out. Uh, it's going to start kind of chronologically. Clark, the Clark bar, uh, and, you know, when I made this post, uh, my friend Beth Alice, Ellis said, hey, what about the Clark bar? And I realized I hadn't had a Clark bar in years. I don't, I'm not at this point sure I've ever had one uh, before you know, this, this, this event. So, um, you know, the Clark bar is created in 1917 by uh, candy maker D.L. Clark. Um, it was the first American combination candy bar. So before that, a candy bar was a piece of chocolate. This was the first combination candy bar. Uh, this version that we have now uh, is totally different than what they had then. Uh, it, was, it originally had a caramel core with real peanuts in it, and now it's just like a peanut butter crunch bar. Um, and uh, uh, the Clark bar has been, you know, it was started by D.L. Clark. It ended up being sold you know, through mergers and acquisitions to the Leaf Corporation, which, uh, when it went bankrupt, sold to Hershey's. But before they sold to Hershey's, they spun, like, a uh, Philadelphia or Pittsburgh native said, I want to buy the Clark Bar. It's from uh, one of those Pennsylvania cities. I'm dreadfully sorry. I can't remember which now. I think it's Pittsburgh. A native said, I want to bring it back to Pittsburgh. So he bought the brand. He went bankrupt. And it's gone through a bunch of more hands. It's now owned by Boyer. Uh, before Boyer, it was owned by the Necco Corporation. You may remember Necco wafers went out of business. Um, and Boyer purchased the rights to Clark. So we will see the Clark bar. Uh, they're actually very hard to get. Uh, I was almost going to substitute the Clark cups because that was the only thing I could find. But the Clark bar uh, is... I was able to find one at Rocket Fizz, so we're going to dig into this thing. 
Yes, my amazing wife said, did you think about Rocket Fizz? And I should have thought of that sooner. I ran over there, and they pretty much had everything that I had been looking for and couldn't find. So I'm going to go ahead and cut into this. I'll cut a... All right. So when I cut into this, and I'm going to admit to something, I cheated. I had a Clark bar yesterday when I found these because I had... Couldn't remember if I'd ever had one before. And what I want to point out is that this is completely different than what we're going to find in a Butterfinger or a Fifth Avenue. Um, this actually reminds me of these, which I won't be eating this tonight. This is a, a honeycomb candy. If you've never had honeycomb candy, I highly recommend it. You can usually pick them up at Publix in their uh, international section. Um, they're popular in Australia. They're popular in Great Britain. And honeycomb candy is just kind of a, you know, spongy candy. And this is that spongy candy made with peanut butter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, dig in. This is the Clark Bar for people who are just joining. So uh, we're going to dig in on this one. Mm. It's actually really good. There's a lot of peanut butter flavor to it. The texture is very much like that honeycomb candy that I was talking about. So um, the result, too, is it gets stuck in my uh, teeth. So there's a high level of getting stuck in the teeth. I did not think I was going to like the Clark bar that much. And I'll tell you why. Because when I got the Clark cups last week... I tried one, and I absolutely hate this product. This 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 Clark cup is terrible. And the reason that it's terrible is because of the chocolate. The chocolate is just, to me, almost unedible. And that's kind of a bad place coming from me. So uh, this chocolate is much better, much smoother, creamier, good milk chocolate flavor. So... Uh, you know, it's hard to say where I feel about the Clark Bar versus everyone else uh, since it's the starter. But it's, it's pretty good. It's got a nice peanut butter flavor. Not huge peanut butter flavor. Um, so, there you go. So, the second peanut butter uh, bar that hit the market is the Butterfinger. And everyone knows the Butterfinger. It's a hugely popular bar. I think it's number 11 in the United States, most popular candy bar. Uh, it was started by the Curtis Corporation in... Um, give me a second. My notes are... It was started in 1923. So uh, six years later, after the Clark Bar was created. Uh, ended up going to Nestle about 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, Nestle just recently sold it to Ferrera. as in like Ferrera Rocher. So it's, um, and in 2019, Ferrera changed the recipe slightly. Uh, they said for better shelf stability and better flavor. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna see. I, I know I've had a can, a, a Butterfinger since then, but I really, my memory is that the Fifth Avenue is better. So we'll see if my, uh, if that holds up. Got the Butterfinger here. Let me get my camera set up. And we'll just cut that in. All right, now, so this is the first big difference here is the layers. This and the Fifth Avenue are have layers of uh, um, the, the peanut butter. It kind of breaks into layers. Um... So, I guess we'll just go straight to the tasting. Hmm. It, it's better than I thought it was going to be. I like it a lot. Better than the Clark Bar. Definitely ahead of the Clark Bar. Yeah, rich peanut buttery flavor. Um, 
it's it's good. It's real good. So now the main challenger, the uh, and yeah, Butterfinger Blizzards, fantastic. Let, let, let's make this clear. I like all of this stuff. I love candy. I love it all. We're talking about what's the top of the mountain. And so we're going to go into Fifth Avenue next. And uh, let me see. See here. The, so the Fifth Avenue was uh, created in 1936, much later um, than the other two, by the Ludens Corporation. Ludens makes cough drops. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, uh, I would get sick and I would be like, can I get Luden's cough drops? Because they taste like candy. They do not taste like cough drops. And the active ingredient in them is pectin. That's the freaking juice of fruits. Like, that's supposed to make your throat feel better. It's supposed to soothe your throat with the pectin from fruits. That is, that is ridiculous. That's just candy. But I love them. So, Luden's Corporation, uh, you know, the capitalist world did its thing it moved it changed hands um and it ended up at hershey's and hershey's has not advertised this bar since 1993 they've still sold them but they have not put out an advertisement for this bar since 93 uh, i found it at walmart hiding behind uh, another display um and then there were tons of them at rocket fizz so i didn't need to crawl the walmart looking for it but that's where i found this one so We'll see. I think I need to leave the wrapper on so I don't remember, forget which one is which. Okay. So now we're... This is, to me, the, the reason that I say it's my favorite. This is so much less dense. That, like, that knife just slid through this thing. This is so much lighter and airy. And... Hey, probably not great for a blizzard, right? I want some big chunks of flavor in there. But for a candy bar, I love, you know, a little more dainty. Because that's, you know, that's how I am. So, we'll see how the Fifth Avenue stacks up. Texture, there's no question. Fifth Avenue, top notch. Flavor, I gotta say the peanut, the, the Butterfinger has a much more peanut buttery flavor. Like you really taste the peanut butter. So, I don't know. It's, I'm, for me, I would go with the, with the Fifth Avenue. I think that's the one I would, I would reach for. Just because I like the way it chews better. And to me, texture is actually a really big part of, you know, pretty much eating. So, that that texture, I like it. But flavor, I think I'd have to go with the edge to Butterfinger. Kind of surprised to hear me say that. So, all right, we're three down, two to go. And the next one is the Zagnut. The Zagnut... Uh, I'd been going in chronological order until now. The Zagnut actually came out uh, a lot sooner uh, than the Fifth Avenue. It came out in 1930. Again, this was by the D.L. Clark Company, the company that made Clark bars. Um, and this one stayed with Leaf. It did not go to that gentleman who, in Pittsburgh who wanted to bring the Clark bar back. And so it was also part of the Hershey acquisition. So this is a Hershey bar now. Sold by the Hershey Company. Uh, you may remember Zagnut. Its moment of biggest fame was in the movie Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is trying to... He's living in the model uh, that the main character, the Dietzes, had made. He's living in that thing. And he's trying to trick a fly to coming... Uh, you know, trying to catch it. And he uses a Zagnut as bait. So that was the first time I had ever even heard of a Zagnut. And I spent several years trying to find one. And I finally did. One of the interesting big changes here, Zagnut, no chocolate. It is coconut coated. It is not chocolate coated. It's co coated with sweet, sweetened toasted coconut. 
So that's going to be very different. Um, and uh, what I'm curious to see is, is it going to be more like a Clark or more like a Fifth Avenue? My guess is that when Hershey's bought, you know, Zagnut, that they pretty much just used their Fifth Avenue and put coconut on it. They're pretty much going to be the same bar, but we'll see. I can tell by that cut that I'm right. Look at those layers. I feel like a geologist here. Look at the way that they're, those stratifications there. So. All right, let's see. Hmm. Flavor's better than the Fifth Avenue, in my opinion. I love the flavor. I do miss the chocolate. Coconut's fine, but I do miss the chocolate. Um, so I think my favorite bar... Man, it's tough to say which one would be my favorite bar of all of these. I think it's just obvious to me now that I can't eliminate any of them from my life. I gotta have them all. But I think I'm gonna give the... In the chocolate bar section i think i lean towards the fifth avenue as my personal favorite um what i can't promise you is am i being biased because i said i like the fifth avenue more and maybe i'm like i'm not gonna like the the butterfinger because of you know i don't want to be wrong i don't think so i think i'm being honest that it's it's better flavor from the butterfinger Better texture from the Fifth Avenue, and I just kind of lean towards the Fifth Avenue. But this, this, this one is the Zagnut has even is better really on both of those scores. So I guess I'd have to say it's my favorite, which so, so shocks me because there's no chocolate, and I do wish there was chocolate. I might chocolate dip this sucker. Make myself really happy. All right, so let's go to the last one, the last bar here. Is not really, I mean, it's a candy bar, but it's not shaped like one. It's the Chico Stick. And my friend uh, Beth Ellis said, I've never even heard of the Chico Stick. Chico Stick come out of Texas. They were the last of these bars. It was invented sometime in the 1950s by the Atkinson Candy Company. They don't know exactly when, or I couldn't find it at least. Um, they used to have a chicken on the label. Chico Stick, and the company used to say, oh, we called it that because it looks like a piece of chicken, but they found out that people weren't buying them because they thought it would taste like a chicken. So they've kept the name, but they have removed all chicken references. And if you even go to their website today, they say that the name, a salesman came up with the name and it sticked, and it stuck. That's all they'll say. They won't say, you know, because they think it looks like a piece of chicken. So... We'll cut this open. One of the things that's interesting about Chico Stick, and the reason I have two, is that this one has no breaks in it. It's completely solid. Very rare to find a Chico Stick that has not been broken. And I'll show you what's actually interesting about that fact. Well, maybe I'm wrong here. This is the Chico Stick. This one's broken in two pieces. Hmm. You're saying, well, since this piece is broken, I think this will be my tester. Tastes like chicken. No. Um, it's good. The peanut butter flavor, not as strong. The mint, the center, much more dense. And the coconut flavor is really stronger. And I kind of liked how light it was on the Zagnut. So I'm going to say that if I was, you know, had to pick one of these to eat at any given time, I'd probably lean towards the Zagnut as being my favorite. Surprised to say that. I thought it was Fifth Avenue. I will not turn down a Fifth Avenue. I will not turn down any of these. But 
Yeah. Interesting. Zag nut. Knocking it out. I did want to have a... I don't want to say dark horse because I'm not going to eat this thing just because it would take me, you know, 30 minutes just to eat one little piece. The Abba Zabba uh, is another off-brand candy. Um, you might remember it from the movie How High. I think one of the characters says, Abba Zabba, you're my only friend. Uh, my friend, my, my sister Kat and her friend James used to always talk about the Abba Zabbas, and I'd never even heard of one. So I finally, years ago, tracked one down and had it. It is a piece of taffy, kind of like Laffy Taffy, with a peanut butter center in it. And uh, they're, they're actually really good, um, but like I said, it is so chewy that I could not eat this on camera. It, 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 like even one little piece would just be too much. It's, I mean, like, yeah. that is a hard piece of candy right there. So, no, we're not going to do that. So, then closing it up, uh, I do have, you know, uh, that, that was really what I wanted to go over. Uh, big shocker tonight that the, the Zagnut fared as well as it did. I thought I was going to like it, but, man, I really, really liked the Zagnut. Um, um, so, uh, to close it out, I have two more little treats for you and really they're treats for me because you can just watch me eat them that's all you can do you can't have any one i love fried pies with chocolate pudding in them the, you 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 like a, a hostess i think sells them uh they're in a little you know sleeve uh who, who else sells one a crispy cream actually sells one at the store love those things and when I was a kid, I swear I had one that had vanilla in it, uh, a, you know, vanilla custard in it. And I have looked and looked and looked for years. And God love her, my sister Kat has also been looking for years. And she actually found some once, found a lady who would make them custom. The lady made them and said, wow, these are fantastic. And oh, by the way, you're out of town I didn't realize that. I won't ship them to you. Sorry, you can't have them. So she was like, she found them, and then the person confirmed, yes, they are delicious. And by the way, you can't have any. So that was that was disappointing. I was actually thinking about that moment this week. But I think about that moment a lot, because anytime I'm in a store, I look for pudding pies. So I was thinking about that moment this week. And I meet my sister for dinner tonight. And what has she done? She has found someone to make the pudding pies with the vanilla custard in them for me and i'm going to find out how we're doing here and i don't know why i'm using a fork i think it's because i'm on camera and i want to appear sophisticated i would normally pick that thing up with my hands and go to town but here's the fork <laughs> Mm hmm. Thank you, Catherine. And for everyone else, I'll post a link in the show notes. Emerald Bakes, that's where we, that's where she was able to get it from. They made it for her. Uh, reach out to her on uh, Instagram there. Maybe she'll make you some. They're fantastic. Fantastic. And remember, I get no financial backing for saying that. I'm just saying it because I love them. All right, so almost done. Last little surprise here. Yesterday when I was at Rocket Fizz, I found something that caught my eye. It has nothing to do with anything else we've said today. It's a ghost pepper gummy. You know I like hot sauce. You know I like hot stuff. I like gummies too. We're going to see how this works. If this works. bag is thick. It says tear into some... I can't tear into nothing. Alright. Oh gosh. There we go. I'm not going to eat this whole thing now. Smells like a cherry gummy. I smell nothing 
but the cherry flavor. Oh my! That's pretty spicy. They, there is definitely ghost powder, pepper in there. I taste the ghost. Yeah. I'm not dying yet. I'm going to drink a little water. That might make it a lot worse. Yeah, I feel the burn. Not, cr not going crazy. That's good, actually. I really like that. I like the... The sweet, you know, sweet cherry flavor. And then about, about the time you're done with that, here comes the heat. Yeah. All right, it's dissipating. It's quick. Ghost is actually pretty quick. So. Yeah, it's good. I, I recommend that. It was $4. That's a lot for a piece of gummy candy. But, you know, what can I say? I'm a sucker for a gimmick. So. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate you know, y'all tuning in. Um, you know, uh, I, I posted that I'm, you know, creating this Cheesin' with Steven Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to be doing my posts through here from now on. The, the main reason is because a lot of people who aren't fa on Facebook wanted to be able to see it, and I don't want to open up my wall. So I want to be able to share these outside of the Facebook community. Uh, I wouldn't mind for people who I don't know to start watching, though I don't think that's very likely. But, uh, you know, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you all for tuning in once again. And uh, I will, you know, uh, we're heading into the winter season here again. And Cheese In With Steven will be coming back in full effect. We'll be doing the advent calendar. But we'll be doing so much more. I'm going to work really hard to keep the episodes under 30 minutes. Uh, I can see that I am two minutes away from breaking that tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. But thanks, everyone. Uh, stay safe. Love you guys. We'll see you soon.